Is it true that black people can't be racist? Well, that depends on the definition you use for racism. By one definition, the definition I call the cultural definition of racism, everyone that is white is by default a racist, and everyone who is black by default is incapable of being a racist. This is a quite popular definition, and is one reason Sam Harris will not talk about racism. Not because he agrees with this definition, I assure you he doesn't, but because it is so incredibly toxic. The cultural definition is as follows. A racist is one who is both privileged and socialized on the basis of race. By a white supremacist system. Racist system. The term applies to all white people. In other words, people of European descent living in the United States, regardless of class, gender, religion, culture, or sexuality. By this definition, people of color cannot be racist. As people within the U.S. system, they do not have the power to back up their prejudices, hostilities, or acts of discrimination. I want to point out immediately, by my preferred definition, this definition is racist. Now the definition I use does away with the power dynamic and is meant to be universal, and it is as follows. Racism is this conscious act of discriminating against another race solely because of their race. Now, power dynamics are often used in definitions of bigotry of one kind or the other, but this leads to asymmetrical definitions and so are not universalizable. Thus, I contend power dynamics should be separated out for this reason. Now, you might think the cultural definition of racism is just racist against white people or people of European descent but it is racist against all people because it assumes black people are powerless and it does not even consider Asians or Latin Americans. By curating a culturally specific definition, we are bundling all kinds of variables together and leaving out all kinds of other dependent variables such as the relationship between other ethnic groups. In short, we are making a bigoted mess of the definition itself. The three primary concepts in the cultural definition of racism are system issues, the power issue, and the innate oppressor issue. The cultural definition assumes that we have a racist system in the United States. Do we? To be a systems issue, it has to be codified into law. System issues are legal issues. In other words, white only bathrooms, white people in the front, and black people in the back. If you have no laws that differentiate races, then you do not have a racist system. This does not mean you don't have racism, it just means it is not a systems issue. Show me a single law that does this and I will show you an illegal law. Yes, I know, affirmative action laws are examples of illegal laws and they do discriminate by virtue of race. But they are not white supremacist laws, they are white guilt laws. Thus, white supremacist system does not exist in the United States today. Are Asian Americans discriminated against? They certainly were in 1942 when we put them in internment camps, a legal action that affected only Japanese Americans. Now, unlike black Americans, Asian Americans are generally better educated and more affluent than any other ethnic group, including white Americans, by a significant margin. How is this possible? if we live in a society that is supposed to be looking out for whitey. Generally, black Americans do worse than any other racial group, including Latinos. Now, in terms of education, black Americans are better educated, but financially, Latinos tend to do better. Make of this what you want, but understand that the reasons for this are complicated. It is assumed it has a lot to do with culture. For example, the Latino culture, when going from first generation to second generation, tends to get better educated. In fact, Latinos are the only second generation American group that does this, making any kind of extrapolation between groups difficult at best. So why are black Americans doing so poorly when other ethnic groups are doing better? By the universal definition of racism, black people as a group are probably the most racist Americans in America right now. Racism leads to anger and anger leads to violence. And this violence does not lead to the killing of other races, it just leads to the killing of themselves. It is 13 times more likely that a black person will kill another black person than all other races combined. Whereas if you are a Latino, the chances that you will be killed by another Latino is slightly less 
then you will be killed by a white guy. Based on the FBI report, white guys are three times more likely to kill a Latino than a black person. It is important to understand that black people in the United States are segregationist, and this segregationist attitude is codified in white guilt of affirmative action. So yes, I blame white people for helping create a perfect storm of guilt and perceived oppression to maximize the nocebo effect. Yes, there are white racists, but the most influential racists in a black person's lives are the black racists, people that constantly remind them that they are oppressed and that whitey is out to get them. Let me be clear, black racists are all the people that cling to the bigoted idea of the cultural definition of racism. As such, white people are probably constitute the largest number of black racists. This idea is incredibly toxic to rational discourse because the definition that this idea is based on is incredibly irrational. So we all dance the pretzel dance when we try to apply the cultural definition of racism. It is the proverbial clusterfuck that screws us all. Ideas like this need to be put into sharp focus and we need to closely examine the effects of these emotionally driven concepts. We need to be clear on our definitions. We cannot assume we have the same definitions. Because my definition and the cultural definition of racism are incompatible ideas. This is not just academic. Real harm can result from undermining the psychological well-being of a person. And the type of ideas embedded in this definition, in my opinion, have been a major driving force in harming Americans in the United States today. Why are black men so violent? In part, it is probably because we are telling them they are victims. Men hate being victims and will bend over backwards not to be a victim. This is, does not mean that all men won't be victims. It just means it's not a valid masculine trait. If a black man hurts someone, by definition he is no longer a victim. He is a perpetrator. And that is a position of power they are seeking because calling him oppressed makes him a victim. As a racial group, black men are twice as violent as white men. I am not surprised. That is what forcing a man to be a victim does. But you don't understand me because I'm black, is a statement of a victim. No one has experienced anyone's subjective experience. Not yet anyways. And two people going through the same external experience may experience a completely different subjective experience. So to assume you understand anyone's experience because of an external experience is presumptuous. You have to explain it if you want it to be understood. My experience is different than yours, period. Mindsets are critical to our well-being and success. A victim mindset does not fit well into a growth mindset. And it is a growth mindset we need to be teaching, not the fixed mindset of the regressive left victimology that is engraved in the cultural definition of racism. We are not all the same and I hope we never will be. To be able to celebrate our differences with a growth mindset will require us to put down our oppressive scale and realize differences can both be advantages and disadvantages. Learning how to leverage our personal experiences is the job we all face. No one has perfect freedom and perceived advantages can be handicaps. And when no any trust fund babies or lottery winners? Hardships can be and often are character building. We evolve to deal with the hardships of living. Our fondest memories often include some hardships. We undermine these experiences when we characterize them on the binary scale of good or bad. We also take away people's agencies when we tell them that they can't be oppressors. They can only be victims. Problems can be identified through group analysis, but solutions are best applied at the individual level. We can't stop treating people as individuals just because they are a member of an identified group, which is precisely what the cultural definition of racism does. But worse, the cultural definition of racism is based on a lie, that racism is systemic, and it isn't anymore. Sure, with oversensitivity training, we can see racism everywhere, but is that the best course of action to take? To be overly sensitive to every act of racism that may be a result of subconscious behavior or fear? The only thing that makes me more angry than racism, only one thing makes me more angry than racism, 
is black people that are shocked at racism. Like, where the fuck you from? <laughs> There's nothing a white person could ever say to me that will ever catch me off guard. Ever. I'm a Being called a racist can get you fired or worse. It's not a fear that black people generally have to worry about, and they little to fear if people are buying into the cultural definition of racism. Yes, I get implicit biases, but that's not racism. That is a stereotype. We all have them, and no one should be called a racist because of them. Blaming people for subconscious categories is an act of divisiveness. Now, Chris Rock is a racist, a funny racist to be sure, but a racist nevertheless. I like Chris Rock, even if he is a racist son of a bitch and I encourage everyone to like and care about racists. Labeling someone a racist today usually signs the end of a conversation, but it shouldn't. Calling someone a racist should not be the end of the conversation. It should be the beginning of the conversation about why they feel that way. Give me money, give me funny, give me something to live for. Give me money, give me funny, give me something to live for. Your logic's insane, your rules are inane. All you do is create more pain. Give me money, give me funny, give me something to live for. Give me money, give me sunny, give me something to live for.